Arduino Lessons Multidimensional Arrays Hello friends. This is the second video about arrays. In the first one, I told what I know about one-dimensional arrays in the Arduino IDE. You learned that they allow in many programming tasks to significantly reduce the size of the code and improve its readability. It is convenient to work with arrays in cycles, sorting through each of their cells sequentially and reading data from it or writing new data there. You can already subscribe to the channel, like and share the link to the video with your friends and welcome to our Arduino Engineering Club. The simplest definition of an array in programming is a grouping of multiple variables of the same type. For example, we have 10 integer variables. An array allows you to group them as if into one variable with an index by which you can clearly access one of the group variables. An array with one index is called one-dimensional. If it has more than one index, then it is a multi-dimensional array. To get a good grasp of the material, and to recall the information about simple arrays, we will consider the topic of multi-dimensional arrays in comparison with one-dimensional arrays. A one-dimensional array can be compared to a number of barrels of beer. The data stored in the cells of this row, for example, will be the levels of beer in each cask. And we can always either measure these levels, or change them by pouring or adding beer. That is, we have the ability to both read the data stored in individual cells and change them to new values. Here, by the way, to find the right barrel, we just need to know its serial number, the index. A two-dimensional array can be represented as a one-story warehouse of barrels of beer. Here, too, data is stored in each barrel, the level of beer inside. And to find a specific barrel, we need to know two serial numbers, the index. The first index is the position of the barrel from left to right, and the second is the number of the row from the nearest to the far. The 3D array is a multi-story warehouse of beer barrels. Here, each barrel should have its own clear unique designation. The number from left to right, the number of the row, as well as the number of the floor. That is, this array has three indices, by which you can find a specific barrel that stores its level of beer. An example for a real use of a two-dimensional array would be a program to control an addressable LED strip with 100 elements in three colors. We can control the intensity of the glow of each of the three colors of each of the 100 elements. And for programmatic work with such an LED strip, it will be quite convenient to use a multi-dimensional array of 100 by 3. These are 100 cells, each of which will store the values of three colors. Abandoning the array, you would have to create 300 separate variables with their own separate names to store all the colors of the ribbon. And there are many more such examples of using multi-dimensional arrays. For example, to control a 10 by 10 by 10 LED cube with three color LEDs, to store all colors, it is convenient to use an array of 10 by 10 by 10 by 3. That is a four-dimensional array of 3,000 cells. Using arrays in an Arduino program starts with their declaration. So how are such arrays declared? One-dimensional, that is, arrays with one index are declared like this. Two-dimensional arrays are declared in the same way, but a second index is added, the second dimension. This is a declaration of a two-dimensional array with 10 rows and 20 columns. And for a LED strip with 100 elements, the array will be declared like this. Each individual element of a two-dimensional array is uniquely identified by a pair of indices. This array consists of 300 cells, each of which stores a byte value. The first index determines the number of the LED in the strip, and the second index determines the number of the LED color. For example, index 0 is red, 1 is green, 
and 2 is blue for an LED or address strip element. For the LED cube example, the array would be defined like this. This is a four-dimensional array. The first three indexes determine the position of the LED in space, and the fourth index allows access to a specific glow color of the selected LED. When declaring an array, you can immediately initialize it, that is, set the initial values of its cells. But for large arrays of hundreds and thousands of cells, such initialization will be too large and undesirable. If during the declaration we need to zero out the cells of the array, we can use this syntax. To write our data values in an array, we simply assign either a number or a calculation result to a single cell. For example, if we need to light up the red color on the 78th element in the address strip, then we assign such values. Don't forget that array indexes are counted from zero. And for a strip of 100 LEDs, we'll have indexes from 0 to 99, and color indexes from 0 to 2. For the LED cube, in order to light the LED with coordinates 5, 3, 7 in green, you need to assign the following values to the cells of the array. And, if there is an inverse task, to read the color value into a separate variable from an array cell, then this can also be done by simple assignment. For example, we want to output the current color of the LED with coordinates 483 to the Arduino IDE port monitor, for which we will write the intensity of the glow of each color into three variables red, green, blue. These will be variables of type byte. In general, accessing an array cell in a program can be performed in the same way as a simple variable. They can be used in calculations in various operands. Also, when accessing an array cell, indices can be specified using integer variables. It is desirable to work with large arrays using the capabilities of cyclic operators. The most commonly used are for loops. For example, if you need to turn off the red color in all elements in the address ribbon, we write the program like this. One for loop was enough here. The program will cycle through all 100 array cells that store red values. These are cells with index 0. And write to each 0 intensity of this color. But, if we want to automatically include all three colors, then the enumeration of all cells in the array can be done with two for loops. Here one cycle is placed inside another cycle. The first loop iterates 100 times, looping through the first index of the array using the variable i, each time activating the second loop. And the second loop iterates three times, sorting through the second index of the array using the variable k. As a result of executing this part of the program, all 300 cells of the array are assigned the number 254, which corresponds to the maximum brightness of the LED color. The larger the array dimension, or the more array indexes we need to go through in the program, the more nested loops we will have to use. For example, if we want to light all the cube's LEDs in white at maximum brightness, then we need four nested for loops one inside the other. This will make your program look nicer than arrayless methods with simple variables. But arrays are not the last tool in the Arduino IDE to add elegance and order to your program. After all, there are still such tools as composite data types, as well as object programming. So we still have something to understand, and there is room to improve. And, when you learn the capabilities of these tools, you will be able to clearly determine in various tasks where it is more appropriate to apply the cycle, where is the function, where are the user-defined data types, and where are the objects. Let me conclude the topic of arrays here. Please also subscribe to the channel, like and share the link to the video with your friends and welcome to our club of Arduino engineers. Write in the comments what topics you are interested in.
I wish you a good day and good mood. And see you later.